I'm going to tell about my journey through space and time. We all definitely think that our lives are extraordinary because we have lived through it. But today I will tell you as a statistic when I am just a dot uh, and then the, what is the overall picture that I have observed. Uh, so, so these are, so as the disclaimer is, these are personal experiences, personal observations and understanding. So, I might have been very naive and uh, you can say that, oh, she missed the, 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 the main thing here. So, so that's, the, that's my uh, main thing, that this, this is all personal. This is my understanding of uh, what is the situation in terms of uh, women, in terms of, and, uh, and I'll tell you through the various institutes I've been to, uh, starting from my bachelor's. So it has been nearly, uh, 18 years, starting from 2004, so I hope you enjoy the journey with me. So I've been fortunate enough to be at one of the best institutes in uh, in India. Uh, my bachelor's is from Shri Venkateshwara College. It is one of the best colleges in Delhi University. So there are very well-equipped labs, very amazing lecturers, and uh, a sports ground, all kinds of facilities, and it was really a very nice experience, beautiful experience. Now, in terms of the topic, so you see, in that kind of a microcosm, in that kind of, uh, nobody will think of emancipating women more, <laughs> because it is a woman's world. You can see that women, uh, women are leaders, they are the organizers, they were events and you know, m most of the big decisions were taken in, this is bachelor, this is physics. And uh, there were, uh, so women were the uh, force with which we were all aligning to. I was also one of the organizers and th so there you don't feel that uh, there's any lack of, in, uh, of uh, equality. Uh, as per the uh, All India Survey of Higher Education, so I was going through it during this talk, and uh, so some some three crore uh, students at this moment, post 12th, are doing some kind of bachelors, and uh, BSc is basically 50 lakh, and 52 percent are female. So th it will be more in zoology, botany. It will be lesser in. Uh, uh, some other subjects, for example, a B.Tech and B.E. would have a lesser percentage, but overall, it's not bad. It's uh, it's uh, it's quite good. It's it's 52 percent, and in, if you are going for if you just focus on the honors one, then there are uh, seven lakh uh, students, and 45 percent are female. And then yes, of course, you would not see that. Okay, that uh, yeah, I have said that. So so yeah, and of course, the lecturers' percentage is also very good. So you see them at all levels, and you see them succeeding, and quite uh, it's a quite it's quite an equitable atmosphere. Then my master's was from Saint Stephen's. Uh, so you use the library and all the facilities there, and then the most of the classes are in the uh, department of physics and astrophysics. So this is all. This is. Uh, uh, so and yes, again, brilliant infrastructure. All so all our labs, all our lecture halls were AC. You will understand if you are from Delhi. Then uh, uh, very nice lecturers. Everything you know. There was no nothing uh, which I would say was lacking or not uh, not at par. And what about women? So here, here you, <laughs> you get a very nice glimpse of how we live in totally in two Indias, which uh, which seem to be quite disconnected. And then where do they connect? And so there, there are these women who are traditional, who would, uh, who, uh, who may not be that confident. But but you know, oh, so, okay. And then there are these uh, uh, women who are. So, so there are introverts, there are extroverts, they are traditional, they are modern, they are submissive, they are assertive, they are accepting, they are revolting. You see a very nice mix. But I would not say that, oh, the, uh, the, the girls from the rural background or from small towns were uh, all the uh, introvert types, but they were also assertive types. And not that all the urban ones were very uh, assertive types. Sometimes they were just uh, being too traditional in their mindset or in their choices. So it, in that also, there's a very nice mix. But you see that mix. You see that how 
uh, people are coming from different backgrounds. They are either letting those backgrounds uh, uh, push their choices or they are making their own choices, how courageous they are, how, uh, so all those kind of things, it's, it's, it's a very nice mixture basically. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so, then, uh, huh, so then one more important thing is that it has nothing to do with the talent, the inherent ability, the skill, the, uh, of your, of, of that, of, or of your interest in that subject. So, uh, it's, so you could be succeeding and you could be not succeeding and that has nothing to do with the other things. Then, uh, but, but where these things come into picture is uh, in terms of do they bound you, in terms of which opportunities you will pursue and uh, which choices you will make, which kind of, for example, in masters when you come to the second year, then you have to make choices regarding the subjects. So I was, I was, it was so clear to me that oh, astrophysics, my God, you can, you can really learn about galaxies and stars and sun and planets, and somebody is going to teach you that. So I thought like that is like the dream come true, and I thought that would be the most taken up subject. But uh, GTR and uh, general theory of relativity and cosmology were the least taken subjects, least, uh, and uh, astrophysics. They were least taken they, they, because people were like that we would not be able to, may, we may not have more career choices after that. And so there are many things that govern. So, but it's not apt, it's not talent. It's, it has nothing to do, it, it has, uh, and the, would, is the interest the governing thing? That, that also depends on how much societal pressure and uh, those things you face. Then I've done a very interesting and uh, one of the most uh, uh, beautiful things. Uh, it was just a one year course. Uh, I had got, uh, when I gave net JRF, I got net, I didn't get JRF. So I had one year and I did bachelor's in education from Central Institute of Education. Uh, uh, so then I got JRF and then I started PhD. But this, this has been, the, why this was a very nice experience is because they get, sub, they get students from all streams, from history, from, from, uh, from uh, social sciences, from psychology, from everywhere. So, and then those, those people are generally the most uh, outspoken and opinionated because there are two interviews that you pass other than the, so there are 30, 40,000 students who sit for the exam and are only 200 make it. So overall, so they are all those, uh, and then when, uh, when suppose there's a topic of discussion and then the teacher would try to get each one's view. So it's so interesting that they have all come from very different teaching, very different understanding of things. And then when they give their view, it's, it's a huge variety and you, uh, it just enriches the way, the way you look at society and you understand that there are so many perspectives. There are so many ways in which people think, in which people decide things, etc. Ah, so this is also so, uh, a very woman dominated uh, place. Where, and uh, why some women have come for, for this, it could be a preferred choice. It could be that they love teaching, but it was also that uh, then we, then you know, people don't want to pursue such a large academic career. They would just want to get out of it, get a job, uh, get married. Then there are traveling constraints. Oh, I, I want to do research, but I can't apply to so many institutes. You know, there are so many women who do not apply even outside their state. And that is, uh, that is uh, sometimes forced by, the, uh, by their parents and, the, and sometimes they also internalize it that how will I survive by myself uh, and uh, security constraints and, and uh, cons concerns and stuff like that. So then, uh, yeah, then they, some are preparing for the competitive exam to get some, another, some uh, job and thus, uh, so though, what governs your academic career other than your interest is also a lot of uh, how, uh, you, how you view your place in society and, what, and other personal fulfillments that you want, you seek. So then after getting JRF, I was back to PhD and uh, uh, so, so first let me just share these IHA statistics. So PhD in science at this moment or during 2019 to 20, they found that 50,000 50, people were pursuing PhD in science and 45% were female. Uh, and physics is done by 7.5 thousand and 40% are female. This is not a bad ratio and if you go for 
uh, zoology again this will become some uh, instead of 40% it will become 75%. So uh, but it it doesn't give you the the most co the correct picture because if you go for institutes of national importance if you go for a little bit higher institute uh, a little bit more uh, known institutes then it falls considerably so and so why have women not opted for or not even uh, sometimes appeared for uh, for for exams that take you elsewhere for phd's because they are given this constraint okay do phd but locally do it within uh, do it in from delhi do it from so but don't go here don't go there so local opportunities and uh, then they uh, suppose they don't want uh, to teach in a school they would much rather like to be a lecturer so then uh, uh, they are, they might be again preparing for exams and other kinds of jobs and then uh, uh, and then of course some uh, uh, so this I have seen a very big difference in university students and uh, institute students. University students are not looking for postdoc. May maybe one or two that okay, they don't even consider it. They, th they feel that okay, once we do PhD, we'll apply for ad hoc positions. We'll apply for and then maybe we'll get up get permanent. But in institute, I think there's a, there's also a peer pressure that. Uh, how what is considered to be a successful phd is have you got a postdoc abroad and uh, so uh, so even if so i say that okay if you want to do postdoc that i understand but you know there's this if there's undue pressure that i i just i just want to i just don't want to uh, do a postdoc but i'm supposed to so that is so for example i have known people who tell me that I don't want to be a professor. I, do, I am doing it right now, but uh, I, when I'm 50 and I'm doing the same thing, I don't even want to do that. So that, so that, that can also, uh, that, that, uh, that is also a fair choice. So, so pressures can exist on both sides and uh, yeah. And of course, yes. So uh, whenever, so as you go higher into the academic career, you try, you notice that the family, family uh, pressures and the societal pressures are supreme in terms of what women are deciding uh, about their next step. My first postdoc was uh, at Ayuka and uh, it's, it's a very nice place, Inter-University Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics, it's in Pune. One of the best things about it is it's an inter-university center. So students from all over India, students from Northeast, from Kerala, from Kashmir, I have made so many friends from around the, from around the country and that is because of this place. So uh, here also you can, you can see that uh, how women from different places have, have different kinds of pressure, different kinds of, and then, oh, and then the numbers have fallen. You can see that, okay, 30, 40% in PhD, and that I'm talking of the past year when there have been so many uh, improvements in terms of there have been uh, steps taken to ensure more in equality. Uh, then for postdoc, and you know this 25, 30%, this is also because some women say that I, I want to do postdoc, but I can't do it abroad. So, so this 25, 30% is also thanks to that. And then, uh, of course, faculty, I think th at my time there was no faculty, no female faculty out of 20. Now I think there is one. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so, so then, yeah, so the main thing is that uh, why, why they are not in the faculty positions is because uh, you have to do postdoc abroad, that you have to do many postdocs and you have to do postdoc abroad. And that is very difficult when uh, when you uh, when when you want want to get married and and then you have to take permission from two sets of families and it is uh, so everyone will agree you can be lucky right so but at least people should acknowledge that luck has also played a factor if they have risen uh, not just so I you, so yeah so that's what I wanted to say that so there are these girls coming from all over India I don't think they were lesser in ability uh, than any of the girls who actually moved forward and made their mark it was it was also about how much support you get from the family financial stability also like they was like no no we can't we we have to have a job and this uh, this pressure is there on men also you know how. I was reading how patriarchy hurts men also. They are supposed to earn for the family. They are supposed to go out. Suppose he wants to be a house husband. That is also not allowed. So, 
so, yeah so yeah so so it, so the main thing that i understood was it was not just perseverance hard work aptitude talent and skills it was also courage courage to go against if suppose somebody is not supporting you still take the step still go ahead and it's luck then i was postdoctoral fellow at china before corona happened so <laughs> i'm just really lucky i had such a wonderful experience uh, and uh, now nobody can go there uh, so yeah so uh, peking university where kavli institute for astronomy and astrophysics is is one of the tourist spot in china in fact people come from all over the all over china to visit that place it's, it's beautiful there are lakes inside anyway so uh yeah so then there were 15 international postdocs in in this institute which was the highest in terms of picking universities different departments and institutes and only three were women this one in india is me and there were two from korea uh and and no, this was not just in physics that's what i was saying that kavli was actually having a nicer percentage in, uh, for example when they when they would require a foreign female postdoc they would call me that oh we have one <laughs> so uh yeah so and then there was you know there there was a global village where uh, or where uh, people from different departments of peking university used to stay so i met women from various countries and uh, and it's not that different it's it's they, they had similar views they had similar issues and uh, they they all had made similar sacrifices i've been to various countries uh, during my phd's and postdocs and uh, it so oh, so there was this one pakistani postdoc uh, woman and uh, she was so happy and she used to tell uh, tell that uh, my husband has allowed me so like i have been one of the lucky ones my husband has allowed me to do a postdoc abroad uh, so then uh, then woman who i generally see uh, they have spouses in the same field they have spouses in at least in the same continents in the same country so they are there but uh, but otherwise uh, and single there were uh, very few single of course uh, single woman at that age is anyway maybe less so i was one of the very few in terms of that it's not just uh, academia uh, missing uh, women are missing at the top everywhere uh, so I, as per aisha you can see that uh, lecturer basically these are uni these are colleges universities so then it keeps falling uh, and then also they would not be in institutes of national importance they would they might be in uh, uh, lesser known universities then all over the world the things are similar we have 190 heads of state only nine are women uh, then if you consider all the parliamentarians around the world only 13% are women then if you consider all the top, top corporate jobs around the world 15% are women uh, and you would say that relax wait things will improve but numbers have not moved numbers sometimes get static sometimes move downwards Uh, uh since 2000 so it numbers have haven't seen an improvement so why is that is the uh, the answer does not lie at the workplace it may lie at home so you have you have to do an outside job you are supposed to do maximum amount of house housework also and child rearing also so that's three responsibilities in a day and so and then of course you uh, uh, you may choose child rearing to be of course to be more important than the other than going out and doing the work uh so so that that reflects in terms of if you consider senior managers there was a survey uh so two third of men have kids and only one third of the senior manager who are women have kids so uh and then the another thing that is very interesting is success and likability so there was this uh, survey in which they just changed the name from uh, from a guy's name to a girl's name and give it to two set of students and they said that what do you think of this person what do you uh, so uh, when uh, if it was a man they they get acceptance they get liking they get appreciation they get admiration that wow this person is so successful whereas woman woman will be seen as like self obsessed and ambitious and rude and out for herself and political and uh, and so that also governs women's choices because why do we want to succeed 
we want to succeed for appreciation we want to succeed because we want acceptance in society so now if that is anti correlated then you would feel that oh okay maybe i should just toe the line i should just do what society expects me to do right i like this uh, <laughs> this comic strip this guy is saying so boys what's this patriarchy thing all these women are talking about uh so yeah these are my last thoughts so one thing is that you can't ignore the roads the 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 the, the society that we live in men own, so there's this uh, very interesting understanding that men own the roads and women just borrow it so how men own the roads they pee on it they spit on it they are there they are just sitting there they are lying there they are standing there just like that whereas woman when she uses the road she tells that oh i am using it because i want to go from here to there i'm just borrowing it i'm i uh, i i'm not, so you would not see a woman just lingering around just hanging around just being there so these are just uh, these are all men's spaces and woman has to tell her purpose and her uh, her uh, uh, and then she is she is allowed to be out there uh, so not just the roads but the institute but the kind of places that we create so, uh, uh, so and then then another thought is breaking the glass ceiling like like there there was this sports woman who was taking a penalty shot and then some editor wrote that oh she if she takes that penalty shot she is going to break the glass ceiling so so then the other view is that why would you say that why is this such a uh, extraordinary thing to do women do extraordinary things uh, every day and even if they are just uh, do it, they are housewives they are still breaking the glass ceiling even they are uh, so not just the ex how would you define that the gra glass ceiling has been broken that is uh, that that sometimes needs to be challenged that sometimes needs to be understood in a uh, in a more wholesome way then interest or choice you know some women are uh, really happy just being home but yes but there should always be a choice like so, so as i was saying that patriarchy hurts men also if men do, men want to focus on domestic things then they should be allowed to do that and if when a man uh, if women want to pursue outside work there should be uh, hindrances should be reduced uh, then then uh, the another interesting thought that i found is that uh, why would you think only in this perspective that either you have been a victim of patriarchy it was all a pet or you were privileged how why can't we just think outside this framework and uh, in terms of that it is that uh, see who i love is nobody's business so what my gender is it should also be nobody's business so gender is gender can be fluid gen so what i associate with so how does that come into picture right so th so that i mean that's just another view so why would we why would you want want to see things in that picture but because we are in that setup but uh, but we should also be able to think outside that setup to to be able to overhauling if we want to overhaul the system we first have to be able to think outside it uh, then then the uh, another thing that i found very interesting is uh, when when interventions are done when there are things done to improve the situation but it should also always be considered that uh, we hope that we are not doing more harm than good that women are when woman is given a t talk she says that oh maybe because i was a woman so that, so that kind of uh, like everything is getting done to me because uh because i am from a weaker gender so so those kind of interventions you have to think more deeply that are they required so first if 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 the situation has not been understood properly it is possible that you would do, do more harm even when your intentions are like the best uh i end here thank you thank you sonali for raising some very uh, pertinent points and you know i mean doing that so uh, wonderfully and for being so funny uh, i'm sure there are lots of comments uh, suggestions you know if any solutions you know we'll be happy to hear about them uh, you when you were saying in kavli uh, you said there were 15 international postdocs and only three were women what about their own people what about the chinese oh yeah 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 they were they were what the what yes. was the percentage there percentage no, 
I think out of 15, there would be like uh, five, seven, so seven. More, more women. More, of course, more. More More, Chi yeah, yeah. Chi more Chinese women, yes. Yeah. Thanks for a really, really nice talk. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but just in the last thing about interventions, uh, it's true that one always thinks, you know, that you're being handed something because you're a woman, right? Mm. But in a, a sort of a mildly shameful thing, all I would say is that in the spirit of your talk is that, yes, it's because I'm a woman. That's all I want to say. Because I'm a woman, I get in what a great thing it is. Turn it around. We do need interventions, but we have to turn around the attitude to interventions. We do need them. That's all I'm so you know that so I I'll tell you where this confusion stems from another way, uh, like uh, women have reserved seats in metro at various places. So then the question is that if women are saying that we are equal to men, so why do they want those seats to be reserved for them? Because affirmative action is sometimes needed. Yeah, so yeah I'm not against it. I'm just yeah. saying that if you have yeah. thought it through, if you yeah. are. I think we yeah. no, don't need to be apologetic about reservations. No, no, no. Of course yeah. not. Yeah. 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 So because, yes, it is hard, like you pointed out very eloquently. So, pra Prajwal. Yeah, I think. Uh, oh. pra Prajwal. There was this uh, talk by Emma Watson, I think, called He for She. So I think that, uh, that is a very enabling kind of attitude that the entire society thinks deeply about it and try to solve it. Not, not men versus women or uh, yes. the, the other way around. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I sort of agree with you, but I think we do need to take a comment very seriously because uh, interventions intended for equity can cause harm. Uh, a classic example is the DST career break fellowships. Uh, they were instituted for people who take career breaks and they were given three years salary plus research costs and all that. An enormous number of women had benefited from it. There's no question about it. However, they didn't make it open to both men and women. They said it's only for women. Uh, but if it's a career break fellowship, it should be open to everybody. And uh, I remember talking to the DSD secretary at the time, and I said, he said, who will apply for this? I said, I know at least two men who would. He said, no, 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 let's take care of the women. But what happens is when, let's say there's a faculty position, and there are two applicants, and they are sort of on par and one happens to be a woman, then there is a tendency for the man to be hired and the woman to be told, you can apply for that fellowship, you'll get that woman's fellowship anyway. Correct, correct. But the point is the attitude in instituting the fellowship is a patriarchal one. You can't have patriarchal interventions. Affirmative action is different, but you can't have patriarchal interventions which are based on a patriarchal framework that it is the women who have to cook and clean, that's why they have to you know, take breaks, and that's why we have to uh, give them special fellowships. And if you look at the mobility scheme, have you seen the mobility scheme of DST? Uh, this is a few years ago they, they started it. It's meant to be for um, the so-called you know, uh, couples, uh, to address the couples problem. And it's again open only to women. If you, if you read the advertisement, it's incredibly patriarchal. It's, uh, it's not, first of all, it's not open to men. And it says it's for, to help women undertake their responsibilities of taking care of their parents and this and that and all kinds of things. So it can cause harm, as she said. So I can, I relate to that because I remember, so we get something called childcare leave. Mm -hmm. Okay, where up to, you know, till the time, you know, two, two children turn 18, mm -hmm. we get uh, two full years of paid leave for sickness, exams, stuff like that. Now, at a, at a conference, I said this should be shared with the father. Okay, I was met with peals of laughter. It was a joke. Okay. Only to women, this government uh, scheme. A lot of young uh, career men got up and said, how outrageous, we also want it. So. Be like the young men. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So thank you very much, Sonali.